Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Al Kaf country, traveling Turkey. In this episode, we're going to discuss Islamic Turkey. Currently, I'm standing in the Romanli fortress next to the Bosphorus, the Roman fortress. And you'll notice that the minara, the minaret behind me, is part of the Fatih Mosque, the Fatih Masjid. This was the first Ottoman Masjid built in old Istanbul on the European side during the conquest, conquest of Constantinople in 1453 by Mehmet the Conqueror, the Opener. Um, and we're right next to the Bosphorus and across the water is the Asian side, but we're on the European side. So let's go ahead and discuss the Islamicizing of Turkey. Now, Turkey is the eighth largest Muslim country in the world by population of Muslims. It has about 74 million uh, Muslims approximately. Um, Turkey consists of a couple different sections. The section that we're standing in here in, in Old Istanbul is which is Constantinople, the city of Constantine, which goes all the way back to about 1700 years ago. And, and then earlier actually as a city called Byzantium, back to the Greeks. Um, when it comes to this area, this is an area called Thrace. Part of Thrace is within the Republic of Turkey and part of Thrace is within the Republic of Greece. Um, in the Asian section of the Republic of Turkey, it is the Anatolian Peninsula. The northern border is the Black Sea region. And then um, the western border is the Aegean Sea and the Sea of Marmara and the Dardanelles. And then the southern border is the Mediterranean Sea all the way over to near where, over to Antakya, to Antioch area, where Turkey has a small little sliver that goes down uh, and is surrounded by Syria. Now the rest of the border extends out east into the Arab and Kurdish lands of, of Turkey in Baladisham, Upper Mesopotamia, where it borders Syria and Iraq, and then finally um, begins to move you know, on, its, on its far eastern border uh, with Iran, uh, that would take us out on the way to Tabriz, and then Armenia and Azerbaijan, and then Georgia, where it meets the Black Sea area, and that's in the Caucasus Mountain region, Caucasus. Now, Islam first began to expand into the, the area of the Republic of Turkey during the Rashidun Caliphate era. So we're talking in the 600s, raids, incursions, battles, warring, starts to take place in this region and many of the Sahaba are coming into these regions and battling and and dying along the way and um, many of them are buried in in Baladisham region and in the Istanbul area where they were making incursions into Constantinople and attempting to conquer it however it was not conquered by the Muslims for 700 something years approximately um, and so you can find many of many pilgrimages uh, and uh, to the graves of Sahaba taking place here in the current context um, from Muslims from around the world. When they come to visit Istanbul, they will typically go and visit various graves of Sahabis. May Allah be pleased with them. Now, um, when we're talking about the Turkey region, we have not only a Sahaba impact on the land, so you will find a couple um, masajid in, that are associated with Bilal Habeshi, um, may Allah be pleased with him, in Tarsus, as well as in Mardin, out in Upper Mesopotamia. Both areas are associated with, uh, with him making adhan and praying at these locations. When you extend a little bit further um, in time, you will find that there are some Ahobate associations, but I believe they're very minor and I'm not certain that they are particularly strong, um, including there's a, there's a masjid in Baladisham associated with uh, 
Muhammad al Bakr. Um, may Allah be pleased with him. Um, a great grandson of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So, you know, that's that's an asso that's associated with Ahl Bayt. Um, and we have many early Muslims associated with Turkey because after the Rashidun era, the Umayyads are, are controlling a huge swath of what is now Turkey. Um, from up, you know, in kind of near the near the Tarsus region and Antakya, and all the way out to the borders of, of Iran and Azerbaijan and Armenia, um, and then later the Abbasids are ruling these same territories. And you see many of uh, many Sufis from the early days associated with these regions, such as Bayezid Bastami, who has a turbe, um, you know, uh, on the way to Antakya. Um, there are a number of um, spots associated with um, Surah Al Kaf. Um, you know, like uh, Lul Karnain is said to have spent time in you know marching along the Black Sea region. Um, this is this is one of the stories. We also have um, three Al Kaf caves that are purportedly the site of the Al Kaf of the companions of the cave. Um, one at Ephesus, one at Ephesus, and that's in the inner Aegean region. Then up in Ephesus, which is in the mountainous region of eastern Turkey, um, between Shanli Urfa and Kayseri, there's beautiful mountain drives to this area, and it's in a very stunning location. Um, there's also a, a, an Alkaf cave outside of Tarsus. Like I mentioned Tarsus before, Tarsus is associated, it's got a Bilal uh, Habeshi location, it also is associated with uh, Nebi Daniel, Alayhi Salam. He has a, a turbay at that location. Um, there are others that are purportedly his tomb site, his burial site. Um, we also have uh, a site so at that location, at one of the main uh, central mosques, we've got um, tombs of Luqman, the wise, and Sith Alayhi Salam, and one of the Umayyad um, caliphs. Um, we have, uh, I forgot, I neglected to mention in the inner Aegean region alongside the, the al Kaf cave, right, it's, it's right next to Ephesus and the ancient Greco-Roman city. And we've got sites associated with Maryam alayhi salam who said to have spent her last days in this area with John the Revelator, John of Patmos, the beloved disciple of Isa alayhi salam according to some accounts. Um, he wrote the book of Revelation uh, on the island of Patmos where he was imprisoned, which is right next to Samos, where Luqman may have been from, known as Aesop or Aesop. And uh, Pythagoras is also from Samos. Um, if you go into um, the Ephesus area, uh, you, you know, you've also, he, uh, John was also said to have written the book of, of John, the Gospel of John, on a hillside right where his tomb is located, his turbe next to an Ottoman castle. Um, and then, and also to have penned a number of letters in that region to Christian churches. Um, also, uh, Luke, the writer of the Gospel of Luke and, and the book of Acts is said to have been buried in this location. Um, you go, like the seven churches of Revelation are all in that region of the inner Aegean. So we're talking like um, pre-Islamic history, but the broader Islamic history if we're talking about the prophetic tradition. You know, if you extend over to um, um, the, the Pamukkale ruins, or I mean the Pamukkale Hot Springs area, you will find the ruins of Hierapolis, an ancient Roman spa town, and one of the disciples of Isa, Philip, um, is, uh, is located at this, at this area where he was martyred. Um, I've got a couple videos about this location. And then continuing back to Balad Hashem, we've got a number of uh, prophets that, that lived in this area, spent time in this area, died and were buried in this area purportedly. You know, Allahu Alam. But, and so it's an interesting place to go and connect with the stories at the very least. And um, there's a, like, so out there you've got sites that are, there's a, a, a place called Dabak that is going, is in some accounts is where um, the Mahama or Armageddon battle will take place. Um, you've got um, in areas um, like Shanli Urfa and Deerbakr, and between them, you've got many places associated with the prophets, including Ibrahim, Lut, 
Um, you know, Ibrahim's uh, nemesis Nimrut was in this area. You've got uh, places associated with Musa and, um, and um, let me see, uh, Nebi Shuaib, you know, who is Jethro. Peace be upon all of them. Um, Harun has a grave out by, out over the Tigris River um, in a very stunning location. And he has, uh, you know, so Nebi Harun is supposed to be buried there. The, the Ten Lost Tribes are associated with this region. Um, and so we've got a number, and that might be might be why a number of the prophets are associated with this area, including Nebi Yunus, Nebi Ayub, Lehi Salam has his well, his healing well and his grave in this area. Nebi Elisha, Elisha, El Yasa, um, the, the inheritor and disciple of Elias, Elijah. He's, he's got a, a couple purported graves in this area. Also near Harun's grave and, and Elisha's grave, we have Dhul Karni, I mean, uh, not, uh, we have uh, Dhul Kifl's grave. Dhul Kifl, some scholars believe him to have been Ezekiel. Um, you know, so there are, you'll notice that there are a lot of apocalyptic prophets associated with uh, Balad Hashem. And uh, so Dhul Kifl could be um, Ezekiel, it could be Obadiah, and it could be the Buddha. So these are, this is debated. Um, we also have, uh, let me see, there's a grave of Eunice. Um, you have the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, which are associated with, the Euphrates is associated with the end times in the book of Revelation, the drying of the Euphrates, the coming of the kings of the east. You have the drying of the Euphrates and the mountain of gold. Um, the Tigris and Euphrates are associated with the book of Genesis in the Bible as being connected to the Garden of Eden. So some have theorized that the Garden of Eden was up in the in Anatolia somewhere. Um, we have, um, well, there's so many, uh, you know, things associated with the beginning, with G the book of Genesis and the book of Revelation from the Bible. Um, the Tigris River was associated with Hawa Aleha Salam, making penance by standing in the river and uh, for long hours. And then uh, while her husband, Adam Alay, uh, Alayhi Salam, he's doing penance in the River Jordan where Yahya or John the Baptist is later going to be baptizing and purifying, calling people to Toba and Tazkiah, purifying people in the river, including Nebi Isa Alayhi Salam, Yeshua, the Messiah, um, before his mission begins, after he's been wandering for 40 days in the wilderness. Um, so in this area, we've got uh, also places associated with uh, Nebi's Ishaq and, and Yaqub. Um, you've got places associated with Nebi Nuh, alayhi salam, including two mountains where the ark may have landed, including Mount Judy, which has really interesting formations on it. And his grave is there at Chesare in the same area. Um, and then he's also associated with out by Deir Bakr near the borders of Iran and Armenia and Georgia. And this is uh, Mount Ararat, which is a, a two-headed volcano that is a, somewhere around 15 to 16,000 foot tall. And it has um, rivers of ice and fire. So it has lava dikes as well as ice glaciers. So it's a very fascinating, beautiful place um, where I did a, a three-week Salah retreat there accidentally, but it, it happened and it was very powerful. Um, during a time when I was made very vulnerable by Allah and he showed me some amazing things so this You know, and then you've also got sites associated with the Sufis in Balad Hashem, including a big cattery center the Shemus um, Masjid and Turbe and Shemus is said to have been one of the, the uh, primary disciples of um, Sheikh uh, Jalani al Qadr, um, you know the, the the eponymous founder of the um, the cattery order and this area, and then there are a number of major Qadari Shiuk in this area. Um, and then uh, a lot of the Naqshbandis go and visit Bayezid Bastami's Turbe. Um, if you go up to um, Mardin, is associated with many ancient Christian traditions that most Christians are unaware of, including the Assyrians, the Chalcedonians. Uh, Haran is associated with the Sabians from the Quran. It's associated with... Um, the Magi, the three wise men who go to Nebi Isa's birth, Nebi Yeshua's birth um, 2,000 years ago. Um, it's associated with the first um, Islamic university, uh, you know, created by, or that was built by the Umayyads 
during their reign. That's at Haran. We also have locations, um, you know, associated with Sufis like around, you go up into Konya in the Anatolian Plateau, um, in the Konya region. There, uh, you know, you have Rumi and uh, his teacher and enlightener Shamsuddin of Tabriz. Um, and then also there is a famous um, Indian Sheikh who was a great musician. He was a Sufi and Rumi used to go and visit him to listen to his music. Um, and then you also have Sheikh Kanawi, um, who was the chief disciple of, um, of Ibn al-Arabi. And so Sheikh Kanawi continued on his tradition and, and we call that the Akbari tradition. Um, it had a tremendous impact on so many different people, so many different Muslims and Sufis and beyond. Um, and then not far from there, you've got Cappadocia associated with the Christian monastic tradition, which had an impact on the Sufi tradition. And there you will find the turbay of Haji Bektash. Um, you know, and also Haji Bektash in, uh, is, uh, he is a Khorasani and he is the eponymous founder of the Bektashi order and very influential in the Alevi Shia movement. That's found in Cappadocia. Also at Konya, I forgot, at, at the turbay of, of um, Jalaluddin Rumi and, and the Mevlevis, many of the Mevlevis are buried there, including his father, his, his primary teacher, and his son, and many of the great Mevlevis, the whirling dervishes. Um, if you go to Kayseri a little bit from there, you have his primary teacher, um, who was, I believe his name was Sheikh Burhan, Burhanuddin. Um, I could be wrong and correct me in the comments, please. Um, I, I, I briefly went there, but I didn't get to spend much time and learn much at this location underneath one of the major volcanoes that's there because there are several volcanoes around Cappadocia that when they erupted they scattered ash and that's why we have the very cool formations at Cappadocia so um so you will find that uh you know his his primary teacher who was the chief disciple of Bahauddin um Rumi's father um is located at Kayseri also Outside of, uh, outside of Konya, on the way to Aksaray, you will find two really amazing turbays in beautiful locations uh, associated with um, Yunus Emre, the great Turkish poet and Sufi, and his teacher, Tapduk Emre. And I believe they're connected to the Yusawi tradition and maybe the Kubrawiya. Um, and there are a couple other sites associated with them in Turkey. So you will find many different uh, graves and, and teaching locations of Walis, various olia of prophets all around um, Turkey. In Istanbul, I neglected to mention on one of the seven hills, you will find a turbay that is associated with Yusha alayhi salam, the chief disciple of Musa alayhi salam. And um, he's supposed to be buried there. And he's associated with the two seas meeting. And of course, here at Istanbul, we have the two seas of soil meeting of Europe and Asia. We have the two seas of water of the Black Sea and the Mediterranean meeting at this location. He's associated with Hidr alayhi salam, the green one, the verdant one, and there are a number of sites around Turkey associated with him as well. Uh, I mentioned, I forgot, I neglected to mention at Antakya, at Antioch, the birthplace of Christianity as we know it. Um, you will find a number of burial sites of, of Isa alayhi salam's disciples and places associated with them. Um, and, and, and sites associated with Musa and Ilyas or Hidr alayhi salam. Um, you also have, uh, so this whole region is a very powerhouse within the prophetic tradition. It's very associated with the beginning of the biblical and prophetic tradition and the eschaton, eschatology, the end of times. Um, so in, it's, it's, it's a fascinating region. I would highly encourage you to go and visit and explore. You know, like I mentioned in another video, Istanbul has several pieces of the black stone. Um, we have beautiful architecture, Islamic architecture from the Ottoman era, from the Seljuk era, from um, I believe the, 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 the Mamluk era, um, in the Ayyubid era. So a number of different styles of, arch you know, the uh, styles from various Islamic empires and kingdoms are scattered throughout Turkey. You will find at, at various locations um, out at, I believe, um, you know, like so, so like in, in many different areas of central Anatolia um, and many places associated with the ancient Christians, which you can, which you can consider part of 
the broader prophetic tradition and an Islamic tradition in, a, in its broader, vaster sense, not the Mohammedan sense, but within the Quranic contexts. So including a lot of places associated with the monastic tradition. Um, so anyway, this is, this is a very amazing Muslim country um, and it has many serious practicing Muslims, um, you know, from mainly from the Hanafi tradition. But if you go out east where the Kurds are, you will find that they are practicing within the Shafi'i tradition and the, um, the Ashari Kalam school, whereas the Turks are generally Hanafi and Maturidi. So it's a very diverse place and very fascinating in so many different Sufi orders and, and Sufis that are not attached to a particular Turuk. Um, to, to, a, to a particular uh, tariqa, I mean, um, or any, any turuk necessarily, but they had an influence on the various turuk. So, um, I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and cut this one short, but until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.